I want to go on to uh, religion of desire. And for this, I want to talk about Paul Tillich. I think Paul Tillich's really, really good on this. For him, God is not some hyper being, hyper presence. God is the name of the ground of being. And when he uses that term, what he means is the ground out of which everything arises, including subject and object, being and non-being. Um, so you, you can't talk about God as an object or even a subject, an entity. In a, in a way, that signifier, the signifier God, signifies, uh, basically you could say signifies what existed before the Big Bang. And you can't even say exist because that even that word doesn't work. The singularity, right? The singularity before the singularity erupts. And when Paul Tillich, you know, you, uses the word God to signify this singularity before existence and non-existence, objectivity and subjectivity, etc., then there's no way to encounter this. Um, yeah, no, I'll, I'll say that for a second. There's no way of encountering this. So the religious experience is not an experience of plentitude and of being overwhelmed by some object that you encounter, but rather is the experience of not having. Right? So for Paul Tillich, religious experience is what he calls ultimate concern. It's a yearning. Now, it might be a yearning for truth, it might be a yearning for beauty, it might be a yearning for justice, but it is the sense in which there is something, and this is very closely connected to Derrida and post-structuralism, there is, there is what Derrida called an undeconstructible, right? There's, a, there's something about, say, justice, we'll take justice, that we can never name. And if we ever think we have justice, if we ever think we've created a completely just or a completely democratic system, then that will become totalitarian because in a way, what Derrida says is, justice is always to come. Democracy is always to come. There's an eschatological dimension to freedom, to justice, to love, to democracy. And when we think we have a society where we've enacted it, we've embodied it, we've incarnated it, uh, we are fooling ourselves because similar to the mystics these are master signifiers these are terms that promise something that they never fully deliver on that's always in the future that's always to come and so for Paul Tillich the and we all have ultimate concern for Paul Tillich uh, it's hard to find sometimes and, and it comes out he would say in demonic ways so for him if justice uh, is is rendered um, into an object, right? We say my nation uh, is just. So you take that abstract notion justice and you say this political party embodies what justice is. He would say that's idolatrous and that's de demonic because you're taking something infinite and you're reducing it to the finite. Uh, justice can be seen within parties, but it is always more than, right? And so the, the purpose of the liturgy is to prevent you from falling into demonic ultimate concern, demonic religious experience, to stop you from thinking that some political party, some political leader, some group has the answer and ha you know, has, that's idolatry, has it in their hand. But rather the liturgy is there to help salt your thirst, to help you yearn for truth for beauty, for justice, to work towards those. So the philosopher is driven by truth. You know, the, the lawyer, the activist might be driven by justice. The artist is driven by beauty. But the liturgy is designed to help realize that the kingdom of God is always there and yet to come. There is an eschatological dimension. And religious experience in this is universal, always happening to everybody. 
So in the first example, I said religious experience is what happens to some people sometimes. You go up into the mountains, you take ayahuasca, you whatever, you, you know, take psilocybin, you, you go to a charismatic meeting, you have the experience and you can name it, you can write it down, you can say it happened on this day at this time, right? That's kind of like the mystical experience. Um, but for Tillich, religious experience is happening to everyone all the time and it is the experience of yearning, the experience of desire, the experience of a lost object that you can never get. And why can you never get it? Because the, the signifier God signifies the ground of being. The ground of being can never be grasped, uh, but rather the ground of being opens up the desire to grasp. Now, on that, what's interesting about Tillich, and this is why Thomas Altizer, who's a radical theologian, he said Paul Tillich opened the door to radical theology but didn't walk through the door. Because if the first example of saturation, the mystical tradition, um, embodies a sense of unknowing that comes from hyper-presence, so there's unknowing in that that comes from hyper-presence. Paul Tillich, there's an unknowing that comes from an absence, right? So there's a certain unknowing and doubt and never having that comes from never being able to get the object. You've you've come out of the ground of being, just like we come from the mother's womb, right? So we, we come out of the ground of being and we can never go back. <laughs> and we are therefore yearning and desiring in the world, never able to return to the ground of being, but showing our connection to that ground of being through our desire for truth and justice and beauty and maybe liberation theology you could, could, you could see as fits in there or whatever but Paul Tillich's notion um, is not quite a drive so for me that's religion of desire right you see if you see where I'm going religion of demand religion of desire uh, by the way, if you think this is not going to work, you can let me know because the chapter's still being written. Right. Um, but what I'm interested in, I don't even think we've got sadly to religions of desire yet, <laughs> um, but I'm really interested in what can be called religion of drive.